Hi guys, I hope you grabbed your paper. So I have three pieces of colorful paper. They're just, I just use construction paper for my kids' room. So if you have construction paper, that's fine. Um, but if you don't have construction paper, if you just have plain white, white printer paper, that should be fine too. And in this video, we're finally gonna get to that word factoring. Factoring is actually what this whole chapter is all going to be about. Each day, I'm gonna teach you different ways to factor. Um, and we're gonna write them all in this factoring book. So factoring is the most essential topic that we're going to learn this semester. In fact, it's so important that it's going to show up in every chapter from here all the way until June. So it's really important that we know how to factor and that we can very easily find our factoring notes to help us in our future chapter. So we're going to make a book so that we can very easily find our notes when we need them. To create this book, you're going to take your three pieces of paper and you're going to offset them by about an inch. So here I've made it them, you know, a little bit separate. It doesn't look like it on the bottom, but you can see on the other side that they are also a little bit separate. And we're actually going to take the other side, the bottom, and we're going to fold it up. And you want it to be, again, about an inch offset in the middle as well. So my middle color is green, but you can see I have two green tabs. Once you've done that, go ahead and fold the paper down. And it's going to create this book. Okay, so we've got all of our different sections here. And then take a stapler. And you want to staple pretty close to the top. I like to just staple once on each side to keep the book together okay this is going to be our factoring book we're going to take notes in this for this whole chapter there will be some days where i'm also going to ask you to do some stuff in your regular math notebook so keep that handy as well um, but for this video we're going to do everything in here and so the first thing i want you to do across this top rectangle we're going to write factor book so that we remember what it is. And for today, we're going to learn how to factor out a GCF. And so on the, your next section down, in my book, it's yellow, we're going to write greatest common factor or GCF. And then I'm also going to write the word all on the side. And I'll explain why I wrote the word all on the side a little bit later. So greatest common factor or GCF, and then the word all over on the side. And once you're ready, go ahead and open up your book. Okay, so I just flipped open that top part. And I'm gonna go ahead and write this slide all across this top where my blue paper is. Unlike our first video, in this video, we're going to be finding a GCF for a binomial or a trinomial or some sort of polynomial. So in our first video, I just gave you two separate uh, numbers. Um, this time, though, they're going to have like a plus sign or a minus sign or something in between them. But the concept is kind of the same. So in this problem, and again, you wrote this down right here, we are going to try to find uh, a number and letters that divide evenly into our two terms. And we want the greatest one, the biggest number possible, the most variables possible. So the biggest number that divides evenly into nine and six is three. Both of my terms do share the variables x and y. The smallest exponent on my x is x to the first. It's in that second term right here. And the smallest exponent for my y is my y to the first which is in the first term right here. So my GCF is 3xy. So the GCF is going to be part of your answer and you're gonna write it in front of some parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you will write what is left over after you divide the original binomial by the GCF. You have to stay consistent with the size of the inside of the parentheses. So again, the GCF is going to go out front. And then if you started with a binomial, you should have a binomial inside your parentheses. And if you had an adding sign, you're also going to have an adding sign in your parentheses. 
So again, try to stay consistent from the original problem into the answer. Okay, so now we're gonna divide. So nine divided by three is three. And when I'm doing my variables, I like to think of it as taking away. If you remember back to our exponents chapter, when we did division, it was a subtraction problem. So I'm gonna think of like, I have two X's, cause it's X squared, and I put one on the outside. So now I'll just have one left over. So it's, I'm gonna have an X in my first term. I had one letter Y, but I put that on the outside. So now I will have no letter Y's in my first term. So my first term changes into three X. For my second term, six divided by three is two. I had one letter X, but I put that on the outside. So now I will have no letter X's. I had two letter Y's and I put one on the outside. So I should still have one Y left over on the inside. So Y to the first. So my second term is two Y. This is my final answer. This has been factored. I took my original problem and I've changed it now into a multiplication problem. Specifically, this is a distributive problem. In fact, if you wanted to check your answer, you could distribute the three X Y into the parentheses and it should give you the original problem again. And that would mean that you did a good job. This whole slide should have been written across the top of your factoring book. Next, we're going to do six more examples. If you like, you can do those across the bottom part down here of your factoring book. We're still in the greatest common factor section. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six. There's not a lot of work to show. You're going to write the original question and then you're going to write the answer. You do want to make sure to write the question and the answer, not just the answer. That won't make sense without the question. For our first question, 3x plus 3. The GCF is the number 3. There are no variables because the first term has a variable, but the second term does not. So it's okay to just have a number for a GCF. So we're going to write a 3 outside the parentheses. You have to make sure that inside the parentheses you still have a binomial. So 3x divided by 3 is x, and then over here, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So if the entire term was also the GCF, then you're going to put a 1 in that place. So we still have the binomial on the inside. For my next example, 2x squared minus 6x, my GCF is 2x. 2 and 6 are both divisible by 2. And both terms do have a letter X. Left over on the inside, I have an X minus three. For my third example, I don't have a number as part of my GCF because two and nine do not share any common factors, except for one, but we don't usually write that down. So the only GCF on that one is the letter A, which is the only thing that they have in common. So it's also okay to just have a variable for your GCF and no numbers. And that's going to take both of the a's out to the front, leaving us with just the 2b minus 9. Remember, you can do a little mental check and make sure you did these correctly. If you redistribute your GCF inside, you should get the original problem again. Go ahead and try these last three problems. See how you do. Pause the video. And then when you're ready, check your answers. These are all going on this side of your factoring book. All right, let's check and see how you did. So on the first one, I got six X squared for my GCF. Greatest common factor, not just any common factor. And then on the inside of my parentheses, I got a negative two X plus three. If you also factored out the negative sign, that's okay. If you factored out the negative sign, you would get negative six X squared. And then the inside would both change signs. So positive two X and then minus three. That would also be an acceptable answer to this question. Now, 28 and 56 gets a little bit more difficult to find the greatest common factor. So make sure you picked the biggest number. In fact, let's try a multiple choice question on this one. Pick the largest factor between 28 and 56.
All right, I hope you picked 28. 56 is divisible by 28. And then they also shared the variables A and B. The last one is a trinomial. So inside your parentheses, you should make sure that you also have a trinomial. When you're working with anything with more than two terms, you just need to make sure that all three terms have the same thing in common. So you can't just pick and choose only going to do two of them. It's what do they all three have in common or sometimes all four. All three of these terms are divisible by five. All three of these terms have a letter A and all three of these terms have a letter C. And so my GCF is 5AC. Since 5AC was the entire third term, I wrote a number one for my new third term. Something divided by itself is one. I hope you filled up the entire first section of our factoring book. Tomorrow we'll fill out section two. And this concludes today's video.